up. Yeah, I don't know. I I always wondered who gets to name streets. Uh, who names them? Is it just like the people who design the road or what? You can like, do like to adopt this highway. Yeah, but I don't think I could call it Power Farts Highway or something. I think you probably could if you donate enough. You'd be like, this uh, stretch of road was graciously donated by the Power, Power Farts, Farts Foundation. Foundation. <laughs> PFF. PFF. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Sounds like a fart. It's perfect. Bro, Add a T at the end. <laughs> Power fart. Foundation. Transnational. Ah, it's kind of good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real highbrow stuff uh, we've got going on. If I can do that, if I ever have enough money to do something stupid like that, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be Elon Musk or <laughs> or Bill Gates. I'd rename every street needs to have like a doo 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 street. Uh, <laughs> streets doo doo street. I would rename. I would rename every street where City Hall is as doo doo street. street. <laughs> I mean, fuck, that'd be so great. Like, imagine, like, you're like, ah, oh, shit, I gotta, I gotta, like, go to the courthouse. Gotta go down to Doo Doo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, what's the address? Uh, f- 4 Doo Doo Street <laughs> in every city in America. It'd be great for consistency. You know where the city hall is, no matter where you go. Yeah, you just gotta find Doo Doo Street. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry, it's a stupid idea, but it's kind of, it's kind of a good idea. Like I know, I know Washington D.C. is like recently renaming all of their streets or whatever. I didn't know that. Yeah, they're like renaming a bu- like a bunch of their their streets for stuff. Okay. I love for them to just be like the White House is on Doo Doo Street, yeah. and you're just like, all right, let's do it. Not the White House. Maybe like the Supreme Court should be on Doo Doo Street. I feel like that fits <laughs> better because like the White House is like that's on like Pennsylvania Avenue or whatever. Mm. I don't know why, but it is, and it's like I don't know Doo Doo Street. Wasn't. Philadelphia, like the first city or whatever the fuck. Philadelphia is a state, so no. Pennsylvania is a state. Philadelphia is a fuck. city. You're right. You just got fucked. On I'm camera. so stupid. <laughs> I really thought I had you, but in reality, you you just you it just, was you who was got. yeah. I showed up to the table and I was like, "How the turntables?" And you're like, "This is a regular table." And I was like, "Shit." Um, no, I uh, I think Philadelphia was the original. That's where the Liberty Bell is. Yeah, I think that was like where the original like Congress was mm-hmm. before DC became a thing. Maybe wasn't like the something was signed there. Yeah, the Declaration of Who Cares? <laughs> That's a joke. Obviously, I this wouldn't is do that. Starting off different. So yeah, this, listen. If this is gonna be a filler episode, all right, we're gonna fill it with all of our stupid, and everyone who listens to this is gonna have to deal with the fact that they're just now dumber because they listen to us talk for however long this is gonna be. I just I, I have a hard time thinking what people listen to this for because looking at our numbers we have people who listen every week and I they've never said anything and I'm just like what do you see in this because I don't see like we're not talking about the same shit yeah what are do you like are it's you us. Here for us it's us what but do they want to hear us talk about <laughs> renaming Doo Doo Street or <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I think there's like a, a threshold where you've invested so much time into getting know, to know somebody like through a podcast or something that they mm. can just do whatever. Like I got that way with like Joe Rogan for a bit now, nah, but like <laughs> it's just worn down. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Well, yeah, yeah. You're like, worn, like, cause that, so like, remember how you were like, yeah, I read this like one book and that's all I'm going to talk about. He did that for three books. Yeah. And at first I was like, wow, they seem really interesting. So I got the books and I read them and I was like, they were okay. Like yeah. they weren't like, it didn't change my life significantly. Right. But then he talked about that for another two years. And I was like, bro, how long are you going to talk about like books from like three years ago that are like, okay. <laughs> They're like not changing your very existence. They're just like interesting stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting because like you're living your life at like a constant rate. Only so much happens yeah. in every week. And part of that week is spent recording the podcast. So a lot of the content is like you stewing on things that have happened. So you can have a different perspective over time on the same thing. But when it, at the end of the day, you're talking about the same thing for years mm. and it's like, uh, it's kind of uh, weird. And then I was listening to, I think it was a famous person, like an actually really famous person giving an interview and in their interview, uh, whatever the question was, was like, how do you feel about whatever topic? And the person responded and he was like, you know, 
I don't know because I basically like off the cuff gave an answer to that question once like 20 years ago. And now that's just like my answer, even though I don't even know if I think that it's just what I think because I've been interviewed about it so much. <laughs> and it's like, huh, when you, when you kind of live your life, uh, partially like on a microphone, it's like, uh, you have to remember the things that you said and this like idea of an audience that knows some of what you said. <laughs> And no one, no two audience members have the same thing of what you said. It's like, what do you do? Talk about the same book for three years. Yeah. I can tell you what I do. Yeah. I just turn my brain off and whatever comes out of my mouth, I just hope it's fine by your standards because I, I have your standards. <laughs> can you imagine you start, you start talking and I'm just like, what you're talking about, shut the fuck up. <laughs> kind of I'm okay with that. That would be so weird. If you... Uh, <laughs> That's not, I, I want to get to the point where in this podcast, this is like a goals kind of thing, but like I would love for this podcast to get to the point where they like, they start to like guess our relationship mm. and they're like, secretly I, married. No, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> uh, no, I, I want them to be like, uh, Yazid and Joseph just they didn't, they didn't really like vibe as well as they normally do. I think maybe like oh, something is up. up. Beef, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I want them to like imagine beef between us when really it was like, oh yeah, like, the time like we had to go back to remote for some reason and our internet timing was off so it just totally messed up like our beat or whatever mm. that really cracked me up yeah. or like one of the ears on the headset wasn't working properly so the sound was happening twice like all, we were like messed up because of that but we don't mention it on the podcast and then just like making shit up because they're just like yeah i think Yuzi and joseph hate each other now yeah like they're gonna they're gonna one of them's gonna die <laughs> yeah i i uh i kind of like that stuff because I think it's funny, but also it's weirdly real. Like I don't know if you're aware of the Joe Budden podcast, but it's mm -hmm. another podcast I watch. It's a hip hop podcast mostly, but uh, they've done over 400 episodes. Right? Uh, for the most part, it's, it's it's Joe Budden from the beginning. He's a rapper. He used to be famous. Now he's a podcaster. Uh, and then two of his friends, and they basically have been there since pretty much the beginning. And uh, one episode, they just took off, and they haven't been back in like two weeks. And there's all this like weird drama and speculation about like where's Rory and Maul? Where's oh they're talking they're 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 having problems about business and money, they're having problems about their friendship, and no, it'll be fine and they'll come back. And there's like all this drama, but it's nuts because it's like a million people watching it every week. And it's real. <laughs> like it, imagine if we really weren't friends and we were like mad at each other, but we still had to do this because it's like our job. That'd be so fucking weird. I don't think I could do it. I am I don't think I could do it. You, you, you'd be, you'd be so easy to read the off energy that I would just like know that it was bad and just not do it. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah, I, I listen. I think a lot of it is just you and I have hilarious chemistry from knowing each other, talking to each other for years and years. And if ever that chemistry went away, I don't think I could do this. But, but like Joe Budden and his friends, like they're forty and they've been fr like mm -hmm. they have that kind of a thing. Um, oh yeah, like a really deep, like a friendship, like, like a real thing. ancient rite of passage style friendship. Hell yeah, yeah, like, like you can you can do a bad thing and it would be okay in the way that it <laughs> wouldn't be for most people because you're my friend, you know. Thank you. Like it's it's a different thing. So I just it, I don't know. Being on, the whole thing is just being on a mic with people is is strange because it's all recorded. Like your little weird. Stomach throat sound that <laughs> happens to be on a microphone for us. I'm keeping that. Please actually do send it to me. Yeah. A little bit of my gurgle. <laughs> it's got the gurgs, guys. Fuck it. We've been talking. It's 77. Hello and welcome to the episode 77, whatever we're doing. Uh, the Home Games Podcast. That's right. I'm easy. You, you closed the last one. I'm Joseph. Uh, this is our, call it a special episode where we're just going to be asking each other questions because we just recorded 76 before this. And the reason that we're double recording is because My the week getting married. I'm getting married the week of uh, April 14th that this is being released. Uh, I am married at this point. I'm getting married. Uh, How does it feel to be married in the future, Joseph? <laughs> in the future, in the past, Joseph. <laughs> uh, I, I I look forward to the day where I can say I am married. But at this point in the past, I will be. Anyway, I have a question for you. Yeah. Are you going to wear your ring? When? All the time. All the time? Well, not all the time, but like when I'm out. Are you going to wear a ring when you're like changing oil? I've never changed the oil in my car in my life. I'm useless oh, as I a man. To, I need to teach you how to do that still. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that I can do. hate doing it, but I can do it. That's like the only thing I can claim is like, this is like proof that at one point, like somebody was like, 
yeah, this boy needs to, to yeah. learn how to do this. It's, it's like, that's like the only thing I can offer up. It's someone that was a, a masculine figure in my life to teach me anything. Yeah. yeah. My grandfather was like, I like cars, therefore you're going to learn how. Which really navigated to me like holding wrenches and flashlights for him for a long time. Mm-hmm. And then he got too old to get underneath the cars to change the oil. So he was like, all right, you're do it. Learn. And I was like, <laughs> he was like, okay, now like untie the the filter and i was like i know what that looks like when it's clean but it's not anymore and he was like i just find it it's like, All right. nice. so now i can do it i can do that i can change a tire i can i can, I can change either. brakes damn yeah you're like a pet boys I, yeah if this if the whole podcast slash you know being a software boy doesn't slash doesn't, VTuber. yeah slash vtuber doesn't work i haven't heard back from them that's but they they hilariously made a statement. They're like, we're only going to respond to you if you get it. Yeah. So they just don't. And, they, and then they also said that you may get a response as late as a month from now. So I was like, I had to wait like four weeks before I find out. Yeah. It's like with jobs or whatever. You, uh, it really sucks ass to get that. Like you weren't selected email, but also you need it. Because yeah. otherwise you're trying to like plan for your future and they already stopped giving a fuck about you like the day after your interview. Yeah, like, I'm kind of at that point because I'm like, I, I still, like, I don't know if I want to get it. I think, okay, so for me, it's like I'm afraid of getting it mm. because then I have to like actually be a, a streamer and do it. But I'm also, I'd, I'd be bummed if I didn't get it. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Um, where it's like this would be, um, it's like scary. It would be great yeah. and scary and comfortable and fine if i didn't you know yeah 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 i don't know i don't know i don't even know if i'd be a good streamer i think i'm i'm better in like a duo format mm. than i am a single i don't i don't find myself funny when i'm alone <laughs> if that makes sense you don't you never laugh at yourself like out loud like god damn that was a slapper that was funny no because i don't i'm actually like very serious when i'm alone mm. like i don't make mm. jokes when i'm alone or anything like i don't do like goofy silly stuff i'm like I don't even smile when it's just me. I kind of don't know. <laughs> like I watch, I watch funny movies and stuff. And I don't laugh out loud normally. Yeah, I don't know. That's like a, it has to be like like insane to make me laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I, I think I started talking to myself because Zenobia talks to herself, and mm. it's like a weird thing that she does, and I just started doing it too, which is weird because like I'm not around her when she talks to herself. Like, I don't know how I got it. Anyway, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll make myself crack up and then I laugh at myself for laughing at myself and then I just keep laughing. It's really odd. I don't know. So I feel like this is how it works. I, I do. Um, I used to talk to myself. I don't know when it's. I used to talk to myself in the shower, but I changed that energy into just practicing hello over and over again. Yeah, it's still wild to me that you do that. But, you know. I, I, I feel like I'm a I'm better off the cuff if I've practiced than if I didn't. Okay. I respect it. But but I will wear my wedding ring, wedding ring. All the time. Yeah, you gotta you gotta let them know. Sorry ladies, you know? I know you want yeah, this yeah. this <laughs> but I'm off the market. Like I mean I mean like uh like you go you go to a public restroom. Mm-hmm. You wear your wedding ring? Or you take it off? Where are you gonna put it? Pocket. Why would you yeah, well, yeah of course I'm gonna wear it. You mean like peeing? Yeah. Yeah, of course I'm aware. And like when you wash your hands? Yeah. It's too much of a hassle to take it off. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably take it off to take a shower or whatever. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe go to bed. Hey, wow. But I lose things too. All those dream hussies. <laughs> you know, you know, let them steal you away from Sylvia, huh? <laughs> I don't know if hussies is something you should be saying hussies. anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Fine. Sorry. <laughs> it was in uh, Family Guy, so I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> the one show. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> Dream Women of the Night or something. I don't know what the correct term is. I'm sorry. Well, that's the name of the episode is Dream Hussies. So. Dream Hussies is a good name for an episode. Also a good name for a strip club. A strip club. Yeah. yeah. That's like a VR strip club. That's a... We should start up. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I think you had the same moment of like, sh- shit. That's like way more money than home games. <laughs> more than negative three hundred dollars. <laughs> Damn. Um. Yeah. What are we even talking about? I guess it's questions episode. So, yeah. uh, wanted to 
go through our spreadsheet that I had made uh, at the beginning of the year, kind of just looking for 2021 home games goals and some kind of 2022 home games goals that might be uh, kind of be shifted around to, to be higher priority. Maybe uh, before before we even like serious stuff, then can I ask you my my dumb question? Yeah, I'm my, rap, my, rap, my dumb rapid fire question. Oh yeah, yeah. What's your power food? I got this from for people who listen to this podcast. I got it from the My Brother, My Brother and Me podcast. They did an episode with it, and I that was it was funny. So I was like, I gotta ask Joseph this question. What is your power food? Is there any more context to what that means? No, my power. Your food. power food. I'll give you the context that they had. Okay. Somebody said their power food was fifteen bean soup and vegetarian chili that was their power food and another person one of the one of the one of the brothers on that podcast said that his power food was a as a salad but with a lot of steak like mostly steak but like a little bit of salad i feel like i just don't have a good answer I mean, my only the only the only the only powerful meals i eat are like steaks i grill or sometimes i'll have a protein shake that sounds powerful the steak you grill Sounds good. This, yeah. I mean, it'd be even more powerful if I like killed it with my bare hands, but I didn't. So, there's a fucking steak you'd get if you <laughs> killed a cow with your bare hands. You would, you literally would have more steak than you could physically eat in a year. If you ate all that steak, you'd probably die. That sounds like a challenge I'm willing to take. If if you're telling me I couldn't eat an entire cooked cow in a year, I promise I could. I might die, but I would promise I could do it. You need like 700 pounds of cow. Uh, what is that, like two pounds of steak a day? <laughs> yeah, something like that. I certainly wouldn't be okay at the end of it if I make it to the end of it, but I would do it. This boy's cholesterol. <laughs> you go to the doctor and then put a needle in him and, and, <laughs> and like, oil. Yeah, oil would fall out. And they'd be like, what the fuck? It's all right, I'll go for a walk. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's all good. Um, I, I don't know either. I think I think my most powerful meal is is beef stroganoff. Just the like if that was a name, that'd be the most powerful chancellor in the land. Stroganoff is a dude. Really? Yeah, he was a, he was like a French cook in Russia and for some nobleman and the nobleman was like prepare for me something amazing and, and new and so he made beef stroganoff and that's where that comes from. I don't know if that's true cuz a lot of like food origins are always like Funny. this is the wild it, like the reality is like a bunch of farmers this is all they had and they raised cows and they had a little bit of wheat or whatever and so they, they got food <laughs> it's like, oh, oh yeah. amazing yeah. <laughs> this is the the grand tale the grand tale out. is that they this is all they had actually yeah. <laughs> but i guess that's like the official story of beef stroganoff Am I the only one that thinks of stroking off every time I hear stroking No, off? I do too. All right. It's like, I that's really too. unfortunate. I didn't know what it was until I decided to make it, basically. Mm. It's just like thick meat pasta. And I didn't even know it had meat in it. I assumed it's it had beef in it. literally called beef stroking Yeah, I knew, I knew it had beef in it, but I didn't know what, I didn't know it was pasta. I didn't know anything about it the, by the first time I, was co- I decided I was going to cook it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is what we told me where it like was very heavy and you died right yeah it, i made it for my brother too and yeah. he was like this is really good but like i'm full <laughs> i was like yeah. yeah yeah bro my power food is not uh marijuana infused macaroni and cheese no that's what i'll tell you but uh i imagine that's more hard yeah it's probably very hard i imagine <laughs> the, uh, yeah, i'm not very powerful at the end of that no uh but yeah i guess that's my answer i don't really have one i, I don't often feel powerful from food I often feel weak. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. After I eat a big meal, I'm like, all right, it's nap time. Yeah. Give me that old siesta. Old siesta? Old siesta. I don't know what old is in Spanish. Old? Uh, like old, like an old man is like a viejo. I don't know what the adjective is. What's an abuela then? So that's a grandmother. What did you say before? Viejo is an old man. Oh, it's like that's like a non-related old man. Yeah, some viejo random is, old dude. Yeah, okay. And vieja is old lady. That's what my tata used to call my nana. It was their endearing term. Oh, that's cute. that's so cute. They'd like argue or whatever, and then he'd go work in the garden. My grandmother would be like, "I married this man for like seventy years." I was like, "Jesus." I didn't re- I didn't like put it all together until like much later when I was like, "Shit, she's been married. She got married younger than I am now. Like I was, and I was like." Fudge, dude, I couldn't be married now. 
Yeah, man. If 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 I had a kid when my mom had me, my kid would be four right now. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. I don't. I think four four years ago, Joseph was in a good place for a child. No, <laughs> you were in like college. We were in like college or something. I just graduated. <laughs> I was yeah. I was not doing well. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's weird to think about and um, getting married now and being like, okay, well, I am I am promising to die with you. It's kind of wild, you know? It's like just thinking about it and being like, yeah, okay, 70 years. I can't even fathom that amount of time, let alone being close to someone. Like sharing your life with a person, like truly sharing your life with a person is crazy. Yeah. Is the, is I don't know anything about marriage. Is it so, actually you're promising to die with them or is it like so, I promise to be with you until at least one of us dies? It's that until death do us part or whatever is like the classic line. I don't know what the rules are. You know, I mean, I, you're a widow or widower or whatever when your spouse dies, but it's like a weird thing to think of. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, writing your vows is literally writing a promise that I will love you until we die. And it's weird promising that because you mean it, but like thinking about what you're saying is crazy because you can't even fathom that amount of time. Yeah. We haven't been alive that, alive that long. You know, I'm, I'm promising to be with you for the next. Twice as long as I've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah, like I said earlier, like I've just been in a weird headspace, just realizing it, realizing that this is happening. Yeah. Time keeps moving forward and I can't do anything. It's pretty wild, dude. I'm happy for you, though. Thank you. I just know you're going to be happy for a long time. Hopefully, till we die. That's the, that's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> Old, old Yazid would would make the joke at that point, like, "Nah, I hope not, because then I can swoop in, steal my man back." <laughs> but you're gonna be married soon. And I won't be able to make those jokes anymore, Snovia. You will actually kill me. <laughs> She's like, "You can't." He's ma- he's got a ring on his finger, Yazid. Yeah, I'll I, be I'll be the dream hussy. <laughs> you're already my dream hussy. <laughs> yeah. uh, wearing nice. a ring is gonna be weird. Like getting used to it too, just because yeah. you know I'm not. I don't wear. Uh, hand jewelry i wear this chain forever but i it took me a while to get used to wearing a watch but now i haven't worn a watch because i've been indoors this whole time i didn't necessarily need to tell time because hmm. i was like on a computer or something i it was weird when i wore a watch <clears throat> for the first time in a long time i was like shoot what's going on yeah, yeah jewelry is weird one time did i tell you about the guy who thought i was like a gangbanger because of my chain no it was just before we graduated college i was at a bar with um some other friends and this like sketchy looking dude. It was like sketchy but safe looking. I can't really describe it beyond that. Like he's into some stuff, but like he's not he gonna he's, yeah, he's not gonna like mess with somebody who's not in that stuff too. Yeah, he's maybe off the shit right now, but he's not gonna hurt anybody. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Anyway, he was just like I was at the bar with my with people, me and them, and then this dude over here is just kinda like looking at us, and I have a gold chain with Virgin Mary on my neck. And the dude was just like Hey man, that's really good for you, man. That you're able to do something else with your time to make money, you know, not be out there gang banging. Just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, who do you think I am? Look at me. <laughs> like, wearing a Catholic chain doesn't make me a gang banger. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. <laughs> so I don't know what that was about, but yeah, jewelry is just weird, I guess, for me. I don't wear it. Maybe he just wanted to become friends with you, and that was the first thing he thought of. I don't know. To say. Man. I mean, that dude, whatever. I don't know how to handle situations. People talk to me. I just think they're, I don't know what they're doing. You know, it's like, stop talking to me. I don't want to be your friend. Unless you want to be my friend, like, tell me though. Yeah. It's not normal though for an adult to be like, yo, <laughs> lonely. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody came up to me and they said, yo, I'm lonely, I, I'd be help like, that person. Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't though. I'd be like, you gotta Sick. find somebody, bro. Like I'm like I ain't. go be lonely over there. Yeah, dude, go be lonely alone, dude. I don't want any of that. Damn, well, I don't want to ruin that, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's the line you think of like later when you're in the shower. Yeah, it's like, you're like, shoot, that was actually what you're supposed to say there. Yeah, yeah. I don't deal with people crying, so you know. Uh, if you ever need to, if you ever need to cry in front of one of your male friends, just find a bitch. Find someone else. <laughs> no, I just, I just, I don't know what to say to comfort because when I cry, I don't want, I don't want anyone to say anything. I just want to deal with it and then be done afterwards. Yeah. So I just assume everyone's like that, and I'm, I don't know why I'm telling you this now. It just occurred to me to tell you this. 
I used to cry all the time. I used to cry in front of people all the time. Really? Yeah. I cried in fourth grade when I didn't get long division. I still, to this day, can't do long division. I used to cry a lot. I still cry a lot. I just don't tell people about it. <laughs> so for home game stuff, we had originally planned to uh, do some 2022 goals kind of later off in the distance and have some higher priority 2021 stuff that we could actually work on. That was kind of my plan to talk about for today, but I don't want it to be shitty or boring. Okay. So we can try to make this a little lighter because we're just talking about like tasks of work, which is uh, not cool, but um, we'll figure it out, I think. Okay. How do you want to approach this list of questions? Do you want me to ask you a question? You ask me one, or do you want me to just blow my question load and then you do the same? Or what are your questions? Um, I'm going to ask you my first question, and we'll just. See I can't listen because I can't actually read anything that close anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> actually, let me let me really quick just talk about uh, the goal stuff. So I, essentially, just to go through the kind of general uh, topics of stuff that I wanted to work on for 2021. Uh, I had uh, kind of nightly stable builds of the different services and kind of productionizing the infrastructure, that kind of stuff. I wanted, uh, you know, HTTPS kind of finalizing that stuff was a goal. Other general kind of improvements, but for 2022, kind of more big lofty goals um, that were that were kind of fuzzier included like save games and unlocks and a game metadata service and stuff like that, or an iOS and Android app. Um, a, a UI for having kind of like an actual proper platform. If there's a, a thousand games available on home games, what does that dashboard look like? It needs to be redesigned. It needs to be, you know, you need to be able to search filter games and stuff like that. And I guess just checking in on that kind of stuff. I basically hit a lot of those 2021 goals and some of them aren't quite done yet, but I've still got eight months to finish them. But when I was working on this game catalog stuff uh, last week, I realized that that redesign of the dashboard for games to be discoverable is kind of part of that. So just moving that up a little bit. And I guess that's just like an update on the general mm -hmm. goals and shit. Still trying to get my 2021 stuff, but just moving around the, the new experience for discovering games, I suppose, which sounds very uh, corporate-y, but it's kind of what it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. This man's on his way to a... <laughs> <laughs> to a marketing position, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's it's weird because it's like a skill set that I don't have of being mm -hmm. able to communicate things in a way that isn't like super technically nerdy or like way too in the weeds. Um, and I definitely have that problem like with people with computer science degrees. So they'll be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" So I have that problem with like regular uh, people I, for sure. I had that problem a lot with yeah. you. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just let him finish. He'll, he'll figure it out eventually or not. He'll keep going. Uh, yeah, if anyway. he just keeps talking, that means I have to say let. No. <laughs> just let him go. Uh, yeah. Anyway, just wanted to kind of check in on that kind of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Progress is being made. Things are being shifted. And I am still uh, working on home games. Nice. That happens. Do you have any questions? Amy? Yeah. I, I. So one of the questions I had for you and... I don't remember if you've answered this question, but in like a very specific, like mm, explicit way, uh, like how do you how do you actually see people using home games? Like how would how would you use home games? I would use home games by taking the binary that is available and downloading it on my computer. I click it and I run it. I've got some shit. If people are at my house and they want to play a board game or a card game or that moment in every party, basically, where it's like, well, I'm done talking to you guys and I still want to hang out. Let's go get Cards Against Humanity or whatever. And let's laugh at Pac-Man uncontrollably guzzling cum for the 30th time. Like, OK, what if we did something that's not that? So it's like, okay, well, right now, it's, it's <laughs> I'd Jackbox. rather do anything but that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, okay, well, then Jackbox. And that's great. Um, basically, just using it like Jackbox today, but yeah. like lower polish, but kind of more flexibility, I guess. Mm -mm. Just kind of weirder, small multiplayer games when people are at the house. I don't see myself playing like a single player narrative in home games. I don't think it's the 
place for it, but uh, we can build the technology and it'll get to that point at some point. I just, in my head, I want this to be a thing where people can easily play games that people are making. And I don't think, I don't think that it needs to be more complicated than that. I think it just needs to be, I have, I have a device and I can download this and click this and kind of in a magic way, I'm playing games with people at my house. They're on my Wi-Fi. I don't understand beyond that. I don't know what's happening. I just know that this shit works in my browser Mm -hmm. as long as this process on my computer is running. Simple. And yeah, like I said, I think the technology can expand beyond that. But the core thing at the moment is just that. Yeah, I I agree with that. Uh, That's how I imagine it. I really do imagine it as like, ah, some some of the boys are coming to chill in my place and we're going to hang out we're gonna do whatever and then you know like ah, like we're gonna run out of steam at some point and like local local games like don't they don't really happen anymore like old school hey like we could never like and i don't think there is a game anymore that you could do like what we did with halo 3 and my house when we're people. young yeah like four people downstairs four people upstairs playing against each other just screaming gargle my balls <laughs> in my house <laughs> yeah yeah, I mean, I'm sure it exists, but it's not as common. It's like there yeah. was a thing with the last generation of consoles where there was a lot of local multiplayer stuff that just wasn't available in the newer versions of games and stuff, and people were kind of bummed about it, and I think it's maybe going the other way now. Um, people realizing that stuff does have value. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that, that's what I mean. Like, I, I want a way of capturing those kinds of moments again. Yeah where it's like just silly games where like you're playing with friends or not friends, but like people, you know, people in the same places. Yeah. 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 And you're just, you're just, you know, talking some smack. It's like playing simple games. Yeah. Not to say Halo is like simple, but I mean like after you've played Halo, I don't know for 150 hours, whatever we all had played Halo. Like you, 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 it's like, like playing the game isn't where our mind was. We were talking about just hanging out with our friends. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's the biggest thing is just making something fun and accessible. Uh, and that's obviously kind of the main point of games, I think, mm-hmm. is, you know, that whole thing. But uh, realizing, like, what's important to me as a person, and I think, uh, I think, I don't know how, like, I think college is a fucking scam. So I think <laughs> being able to build things and being able to learn how to build things without needing to go into debt or take out a loan or like a bunch of fucking professors who don't give a shit about you or what they're teaching. Like I just, I fucking hated learning computer science. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, so I just think if, if I can help people learn something, take that skill and make their life better, then that would be great. Like a, as a per- personal accomplishment for me, like mm-hmm. I think I would like to be a teacher because of the impact that that would have. I also know I'm too impatient to be a teacher, <laughs> so I don't I don't want to like ruin someone's life because I was like screaming at them because they didn't get fucking pointers or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just want to to make it so people can learn from it, people can kind of help themselves grow from it, and to really close the whole thing together. I would really like it if people could make money from it in a way that was completely not shitty. Uh, And that's like the tipping button in my current thing, right? Like if you put effort and time into this thing and you taught your, the same way that people used to make flash games, like I'm going to fuck around and make a (laughs) new grounds thing. Um, That the flash is dead and there is no, thing like new grounds at least that i'm aware of or congregate or whatever where it's so focused on what people are making and like a mm-hmm. community type thing and i don't like the idea of me maintaining the infrastructure for all of it so it makes sense that you run it and it's also like the feature is you run your server and you play your games with your people and i'm not paying for it like mm-hmm. when it's not a business and it's not a you know it's essentially still a hobby at this point like that seems the lowest risk way to do it. Um, so just these ideas, whatever. But but yeah, it should be a fun, simple game thing to get people in and interested. And then if they want to dig in beyond that, they can learn something or build their skills. And then if they want to go beyond that, they can actually just make money from it. Yeah. If it's that whole thing, then that would be perfect, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think it'd be pretty sick. Yeah. I don't know if I would... 
if I would be a young, a younger, a younger Yazid would be like, let's, oh, I really like this game. Let me, let me try to make my own game. Yeah. Cause your boy, what your boy thought he was going to go into game design when he was starting Everybody off does. college. Yeah. And then I, and then I took a, a physics course and a game, a course we had to make a game and I, and that was the closest I've ever come to being like, I'm not friends with my friends anymore. <laughs> I legitimately was like, I don't want to be friends with them anymore for a little bit of that project. Yeah, but the problem wasn't that it was what no, we were just, learning at school. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really, I didn't know what I was doing, and I was expected to be responsible and like juggle too many classes at once and be like, I need to make this with my friends, but also like, you know, I have like exams to take or whatever. It's like, oh, it's yeah. too much pressure on me. Well, yeah, and and I just think like. Yeah. there's a disconnect because I had that thing too where it was, oh, I want to go into game design. I, I, I like computers. I'm familiar with computers and I don't really have any interest or skills outside of computers. And so when you're 18 making a decision on a web browser, like what are, what's, what are you going to do for the rest of your life? It's like, all right, computer science because dumb brain and just like, oh, I'm going to make Halo or whatever. And then you're confronted with the reality, which is that those intro level professors, except for Homer, they don't, they're terrible at teaching. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't even say Homer's great, but like it's people teaching you things in the wrong way because their interest isn't teaching you. Their interest is getting their research grant or whatever, and they have to teach. It's mm-hmm. the totally wrong way to get people into something. If you're passionate about computers and shit, people can learn from a passionate person without like formally showing ah, like our teacher guy. Teacher guy. Yeah, he was the best. Yeah. And I got like 102% in his class because yeah. it was easy as shit, but also because he was really good at teaching that shit because he understood it and loved it. Yeah. And that's Lots the whole shit. other thing of content. Like, <laughs> if, if, if people... I don't even remember his name. I just remember his teacher. Teacher man. Sorry. Teacher man. <laughs> yeah, teacher. Uh, Mark Fisher. Oh, damn. Uh, he was great. Good yeah. ponytail. Um, but if, if, if... I guess I guess that's what, my whole thing with the podcast... I understand that I, uh, like, I, like I, we said this before, I'm not a dumb person, but I don't think I speak like a smart person. Yeah. I, I want this podcast to be like, that's a guy and he's talking about things I don't maybe understand yet, but I can like vibe with him. Yeah. And if, if the door is a lot easier for someone to be like, oh, maybe that dumbass talking about 42 Doug learning the math behind this like maybe you don't need to be like a stuffy weirdo who like understands the deepest fundamentals of this shit and like sucks yeah. you know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I, I, yeah. to me like all of this stuff is just what i think like why i like programming and i think just getting all this shit out there for other people to either learn from it or build on it or do whatever like i think that's my goal yeah so for home games the platform itself yeah yeah i can play games on it but really my goal is like everything not just yeah. the I got you. I got you. I uh, I want to make a game that people play that they're like, hell, like I want to want a game that people plan to play Mm, that they like think about during the day. No, no, no. Like I I want like they organize like like you know like like, Mm. to play Among Us. Like you can't Mm. just get on and be like everyone, let's play Among Us, and everyone's like, yeah, or like risk. Yeah, yeah. You you do like all right, 15 of us are going to play Among Us. Yeah. Or like 10 of us are going to play Among Us. Like I got to make sure everyone can play Among Us. Like I want to I want a game that people plan around to play. And I have no idea what skill sets I would need for that because I need to make a pretty good game. Yeah. Or at least a fun game. But that's the cool thing is that we're just figuring it out and we're recording yeah. the whole time. That's, to me, that's the magic of this. Yeah, everyone's like, when is he actually going to do it? <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh... I'm I'm pretty sure that by the end of this year I'm gonna be happy with something that I've built that's playable. <laughs> that's a stupid thing. I mean, I'm obviously pretty happy with the things that we've built at this point. It's just, I guess I'm super aware of the gap between what we have and what we need, mm-hmm. and it's a significant gap. And I'm also super aware of the fact that uh, we're not basically just how how much time it'll take to fill that gap and it's a lot of time and it's not like years it's just months and then trying to prioritize things in the correct way so you know whatever it's tough but 
another, another thing is just showcasing progress. You can make a ton of progress in a week and you spent like 20 hours writing all this code and you've got certain things working, but the website, the platform, the games, everything looked the same. But the shit I'm working on is like, it's so next level, bro. You're not even thinking about it. <laughs> but like, really? But like, because because I can't I can't make the the like thing in my head real to people until I make it real. It's just so much time and effort to make it real. So it's hard. Yeah. Being excited and trying to convey the excitement without being like, this is so far away. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. What, were we even, what, was, what was the main question there? What were we even talking about? My question like uh, 20 minutes ago was, uh, was what, what, I, what, what, yeah, what would you want? How would you use home games was my question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to ask me a question now and then we can go back and forth. That was good. Uh, yeah, I'll ask you one. So my next question was, or my first question, uh, what's something that you, well, I guess, is, what's something you want to make in home games that you currently can't? I want to make, I want to make a hide and seek game. Oh yeah, the location. The location. Mm-hmm. And you play it. Well, here's, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how I want this game to be. Okay. Everyone comes over, right? You're all, you're all like, all right, let's, we're gonna, we wanna like play this game, right? It's like you start it up and everything. Everyone takes out their phone, and everyone's phone prompts them, uh, "Please record a scream. Press this button and then scream <laughs> into it. Scream into your phone." I want everyone to do it. It's like ten people just one at a time screaming into their phone, and it says, "All right, cool, thanks." Uh, turn off all the lights in your house, but keep your phone with you and make sure your volume's up. And then. Uh, one person is selected as the searcher mm. or the hunter and everyone else is supposed to hide and they get a countdown. And so everyone's in the dark looking around trying to find a hiding place. Okay. And and the searcher doesn't know where they are exactly, but they get a they get a, an arrow, right? They have ten, nine arrows that are just pointing around their screen or whatever to be like, hey, the people are in this direction, but you don't know where. And when they find somebody and they're in a, a certain proximity or they touch phones or something, uh, it, the, it, the, the person who gets caught, their phone, everyone else's phone screams. <laughs> so you know that somebody got caught and now suddenly the searcher knows where everybody was because their phones all scream and they have to go find a new hiding spot That's all in the dark. Cool. All in the dark. <laughs> That's the game I want to make, dude. I, I really, I've thought about that game for hours and I'm like, fuck, it's too hard for me to even think about all the compete things I would need to do to make that game but that's what i would want to do like imagine like nine people ten people in your house pitch black i'm talking like nighttime windows windows closed curtains drawn lights out tv off it's just phone screens illuminating just like a little bit and you like tuck your phone close to you and all it's like imagine the sheer like like just the startle of because you're not anywhere close to the person who got caught and just suddenly your phone screams oh bro Oh, that, that's the game I'd want to make. That's what I would want. That's what I want to make on home games. That's pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. I would, I would enjoy that quite a bit. We need so much polish on existing stuff, and we need that location stuff like built and fleshed out and working and tested and shit. Yeah. But it, like, in my head, that game isn't super complex. It's just the tools underneath it that are. Yeah, I think the best games for home games aren't complex. I think. I mean, the code at least is. No, I mean, I mean, even the game mechanics itself, it's just hide and seek, right? Like, I think, I think the best games for party games are not complex. I think they're simple that you can pick up no matter like what mental state you're in. Yeah. And I think that that game would be fun no matter what. I agree. Like, I could see that getting played at a bachelor party. Yeah. uh, Yeah. (laughs) It's funny because like over the past couple of years, every, every time we play card games, I mean, I get mad. (laughs) <laughs> like, like we went to a target a few months ago we were walking down the cardboard the, the cardboard uh the board game aisle mm-hmm. and i was looking at everything it's like we could make all this in home games like, yeah we could put fucking milton bradley out of business someday <laughs> but it's like because that's just like how i think about it not yeah. what it is you mm-hmm. know it's it's weird but i like the idea thank you yeah, yeah. you couldn't make that a board game and that's kind of why all this is great yeah you, you couldn't you couldn't do that without yeah i mean that's the kind of game that you gotta like make up and like through the generations it spreads kind of like hide and seek or tag or something but like the rules for like who's it and all that stuff like freeze tag like how did that come out but anyway yeah, yeah. that's what i would want to make at home games that is my my dream goal is to have that done this year is to some point this year is to have all of that done in in home games and you can play it and we could play it like 
when I'm done with it, like we could play it the next day. Like, be, I'm like, oh yeah, and all my friends are coming over because COVID will be over too, and it'll be great. And I'll be like, yeah, all, like all my friends are coming over. It's so, like six people. And we're gonna play. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> Everybody then, I know. Everyone I know. All six people are gonna, are gonna come over. I'm gonna turn off all the lights. I'm gonna put my dog. I'm gonna get someone to watch my dog so that she doesn't have to worry about all the loud noises and people running around in the dark. Goddamn. Because my house is like mostly big and empty, so like hiding spaces are sparse. Yeah. So it just really cracked me up to see where people decide to hide. Dude standing under a lampshade. No little- I didn't have lampshades behind my curtains. I have great hiding spots because I play hide and seek with my dog. So mm. y'all are gonna get rolled. You jump in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of this is this is maybe a little bit of my too much information for people but i'm trying to get rid of some of the like extra bathroom supplies that i have like extra shampoo and stuff so that i can hide in the cupboard when i play hide and seek with my dog to see if she can find me <clears throat> that's where i'm at nice that's where i'm at i'm planning like three months in advance because that's how long it takes me to go through as much shampoo as i bought so <laughs> it was like a double pack from cost or from uh yeah it might have been from costco of the shampoo that i like and i was like hell yeah brother so now i just have like literally like four months of shampoo to go through and i'm not like a stingy shampoo person you plan for life in ways i don't i find enjoyment in life in the such small like minutia mm-hmm. but when I, when it comes cabinet. to like planning big stuff i'm like a big idiot boy <laughs> Like if you like if you told me to plan anything, I'm like I don't know what I'm doing. Plan my bachelor party. You did it though. I did it. Yeah, I did, did it. it. I did an okay job. Yeah. It could have been I better. Thought, I thought you did. Oh, that was great. I blame Alex <laughs> for everything. Uh, <laughs> do you want to ask your next one, or I can? Yeah. I can't read my next one. What does it say? Uh, your next question says, "If we could collabo with a studio, which studio? Would oh you yeah. Want? yeah, 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 yeah." What, what is this question? Yeah, yeah. If you could, cl- like, basically, like, if you co- could collab with a video game studio, like a big boy studio. Do they need to exist still? No. Okay. But does it change your answer? Well, because if they exist still, then it would have to be one of the, like, four companies that still makes games. It's a lot more than four companies. Well, okay, look. It- studio meaning like a small boy, right? Like, because you have the publisher, like EA, but there's, like, they have, like, studios that they... they- yeah, but they're all like EA Studios. It's like a yeah, three hundred yeah. person room in Montreal, whatever the fuck. I don't know. All I can think of is the people who made uh, uh, Geometry Wars and that's oh. bizarre creations. They also made the Club, which is a like an arcadey third person shooter, and they think they made Blur, which was like a combat racing game, which was cool. Basically, their games at their core, and they made Project Gotham Racing on the Xbox. They're like very arcadey games. Damn. What? <laughs> That's a game I've, I'd heard of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Geometry Wars was actually from Project Gotham Racing. It was like a Easter egg or something, I think, on the maybe the original Xbox, uh, where if you like got out of your car in the garage or whatever and like went to an arcade machine, there's a fake game as Geometry Wars. And then they eventually mm-hmm. made it its own thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, their games just have like a very simple arcade thing. Like The thing that gets me is if you can get better at the game... You can basically hit peak. You could perfect the level and mm. get the best possible score. Like that's how all their games are basically, and, and that's my favorite thing. So, yeah, yeah, I guess that's my answer. Oh, that'd be pretty sick. Smart people who know how to make points fun. <laughs> I uh, they got shut down by the way. Oh no! Yeah, fucking world, cruel reality. I think Activision <laughs> shut them down. Mother Blizzard, Blizzard Activision, Blizz Activision. Um. My uh, my answer is whatever studio made Fusion Frenzy uh, on the original Xbox. I don't know if that's just like the generic Microsoft game studios. Like I don't know if that's if a- it is, then I want Microsoft to make a game on home games, which is unlikely, but <laughs> it is a dream I have. Uh, I I never even bought or played the real deal Fusion Frenzy. I just played the demos, and I was like, this is so much fun. And then I never played the original game. It's like shitty Mario Party, right? Yeah, but it's like fun shitty Mario Party. <laughs> It's like Mario Party, but minus minus Mario. Mm, you just hate Mario the character. I don't hate Mario the character. I just it's been so long since I played Nintendo games that I don't have the like emotional attachment to Mario that I feel like other people do. Yeah, but I also I liked Fusion Friendsly. It was it was like stupid and dumb, but like the demo was so much fun. And I always like because I think the demo only unlocked like four game modes or something like that, or like four mini games or whatever. Mm. 
also i think i don't know if this is true about fusion frenzy but i hope that they didn't have like a map you just i just wanted a game where you play a bunch of mini games mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like fun small mini games like warrior kind of I never played WarioWare, so I don't know. It's, it's basically that. It's just like, hey, you pick your nose, and you do the controller, and you're just like, pick my nose, <laughs> and then it goes to the next game. Uh, kind of like how the mini games in Among Us are so simple. Yeah, I, yeah, I like over. that, too. I was thinking about that. Also, like maybe like the Among Us studio puts Among Us on on here, like <laughs> official Among Us, and I was like, that'd be pretty sick. But also, like, I don't know if I'd have more or less. I think Among Us would be harder to play in person. Yeah, because you could see the tells of people. Yeah, because if I get murked and I'm on my phone, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be like, oh, or make like a noise, be like, yeah. I don't. And then also, I know for sure if I killed somebody, I'd look over at them and yeah. like, <laughs> the like, bitch. Yeah, like, how does it feel? How does it feel to die at my hands? <laughs> yeah, 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 I get that. I do yeah. that. Uh, we have a my like. Yeah, I have a video meeting where I play Among Us with people sometimes, and I definitely let people know when i die because i do a big <sighs> it's yeah. like every fucking time it's hard not to yeah that's why i play on mute smart smart yeah also i didn't ask i didn't answer my own question but first um, a game that you want to make but you can't uh i would like to make a rhythm game i really love rhythm games it's mm. just a problem with late, uh, latency at the, at the moment with home games it doesn't really make it a feasible thing uh, if you made a multiplayer rhythm game that was good would literally become billionaires. One of the simple things, like if you don't think about any details, it's perfect. But we music, but like your phones, people are just flailing with their phones and they're making a song. Like that'd be pretty fun. Drunk people at a party, that would be their shit. Well, until the TV gets a phone through the through it, that was part of the fun, dude. The Wii was successful because it destroyed living rooms. People punch their children with the Connect. It happens with every great invention. What? Yeah, the Connect. Remember the camera on the Xbox? Yeah. Yeah, people beat the shit out of their kids. They'd walk right through because they're dumb. And then people... Oh! Would, you know, there's was videos like, all over YouTube of it. I was like, what are you talking about? No, they didn't just like go beat the shit out of their yeah, kid yeah, because yeah. they had a camera. In their well, that's why I was like, <laughs> why are those two things connected? I feel like if anything, cameras would reduce that. But yeah. the other thing I was thinking of was like the VR ones where like people like dive into their TVs and stuff like that. I punched my wall a couple times doing that. So I asked you at the bachelor party if you'd ever punch your wall. You didn't say yes to that. You just went into like a side story. Like you, so you didn't want to... <laughs> wouldn't like rage punch my wall that's <laughs> yeah. that's a stupid idea but i have accidentally smacked my wall before it's a it's a you know, oh, i a, see yeah a, you're not put, you're not trying to put a hole in your wall yeah no. i got you i got you yeah. i've seen the i've seen the reality of that you know it's not pretty yeah it's a it's an expensive it's a hole in the bill. fucking wall <laughs> just a bill to pay yeah, yeah. um no i i got really mad when we were moving into our house in june and I broke a hundred and fifty dollar modem that I had just yep. bought that day, and it was like, maybe I should keep my temper in check. So I don't think I want to punch a wall. It's like the worst version of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Um, like I said, though, if you if you can make a multiplayer rhythm game that's good, we literally will just shit money because yeah. that's. I it, I imagine a lot of people don't realize that they want it, and in the moment it's like there's this multiplayer rhythm game you want to play, and they'd be like, yeah. <laughs> and all you need to do is like flail to a rhythm and you're killing it like yeah you get five stars or whatever yeah that yeah. could be fun because like osu mm-hmm. super niche popularity it's yeah yeah but like i like osu yeah it's like it's like niche popular but like that's like like one of the like iconic rhythm games yeah it's a classic mm-hmm. um, like beat saber but it's a lightsaber duel <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fun <laughs> Uh, Muse Dash is another one. It's like anime girls. It's kind of creepy, but um, it's a good rhythm game. It's fun. Simple. I don't know. I don't play very many anime girl games. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> uh, what's the most frustrating part of working on home games? How little time I have for it. Same, dude. Bro. But also... I fantasize about taking a year off of my life. Sabbatical. Yeah. I do that, but for sailing a boat from... Tahiti to Seattle. <laughs> you would die. You wouldn't make it. I get seasick, so that's not even. Yeah, you wouldn't. That's not part of the question. If I would make it or not. Listen, um, this is a fantasy. In my <laughs> fantasy world, is he doesn't get seasick and he does survive it. Yeah. But he's a changed man with a big beard and long hair, and he comes off that boat, and everybody is like, "Damn, 
you eat so fine. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, no, I was going to say, one of the things I actually don't like is how repetitive it is to make a new game. Because mm. basically the way I've started all of my games is the same. I just copy a game that works, and I'm like, yep. And then I just start making changes until it's what I want it to be. In your head, how do you fix that? Because I do uh, that with like React components. Yeah, I do that with React components too. Uh, <laughs> I do that professionally for React components. <laughs> <laughs> it's lift and shift, not yeah. copy paste. It's lift and shift. I've noticed that. That's the way you pretty it up during stand up. Bro, I just tell them I'm doing stuff. I don't I don't tell, I don't get the minutia. If they ever realized how the minutia of what I knew. <laughs> be like, why does this guy watch an hour and a half of YouTube during meetings? <laughs> it's like office space. What would you say? You, you here? do officially, I don't know. <laughs> um I was gonna say I I I think it should be kind of like React, where you're like React like to start the React start app thingy where mm -hmm. it's like here's like base stuff extends class yeah yeah I I'd do something like that where it's we like we do extend game it just doesn't do anything in the base class yeah I'd I'd maybe like something like that like where it gives you your base and it gives you like here and it gives you like stubs for each function that don't really like do much mm -hmm. and then Would it just be a script that puts out like a JavaScript file yeah yeah I think so I think like at the simplest level it can be that and then like once we tighten it up like basically for me because square and color tag are basically the same games just one you're everyone's trying to get to this one square and the other one everyone's trying to find everybody else and mechanically they're the same game so a lot of shared stuff yeah there. it's a lot of shared stuff so like I, w I would like to like see combinations of utils and like combining them yeah but yeah I think that was another thing I wanted to try to get to at some point this year when we were talking about like the vision library that yeah. would be a, an example of a common thing or whatever and yeah common tools and if you want a layout that goes left right in columns or whatever then take this and you know kind of the way that flexbox whatever the fuck thing is for html uh, it's kind of standard layouts yeah yeah something like that would be nice also i was thinking about like i was thinking about this like i don't know when i was thinking about it but i was like uh Right now, all of my games work on grid. They're basically like big grid. So like it's like you move five pixels always. Any direction you move, it's chunks of five. And every game node that you look at is five by five mm -hmm. or four by four or whatever it actually is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing. I, I want more time to work on home games, not just to like make new stuff, but also like I want to go back and clean up Square. And I want to make <laughs> Color Tag better. So that I... I I just I my options really are to like put out color tag and then move on to the next thing or to 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 not make four games this year. Yeah. And I really want to make my 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 haunted house game thing. So I'm yeah. going to do that. We can definitely like like we talked about last week like shifting goals or whatever. I mean, I don't want to shift my goal though to make three shift. games and update square cuz I don't know how much I can actually update Square well, yeah, but without you're... just taking color tag and being like, <laughs> like for people who are listening, I did a hand gesture for like putting a note at the top and then everyone else has to like move up to get it. Like there's not really much change. I can do that right now. Yeah. But I <laughs> guess also just like the idea of a game of quarter is the same kind of thing of like, I don't know what I don't know yet. You know, yeah. you could be kind of like knee deep in the design of the third game and then be like, oh, fuck, it's 2030. Yeah, well, OK, that's just kind of how it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. All I know is that there will be a point, I think, maybe a year from now where I wouldn't be necessary for someone else to do this. So that I can kill you. No. <laughs> yeah, finally. Uh, the conclusion of the podcast. You know, the epic. I murder Yuzi. Yeah, I murder I murder Yuzi. I murder Joseph on, on live streaming this podcast. It's the season one cliffhanger. For episode 100. Yeah. You should kill me on camera. No. <laughs> no. Can we just do a complete old school style, style podcast where we have no notes? And we just start the podcast whenever we feel like it's we're at a good spot, and we just go for however long it's gonna go. Yeah, I want like a complete mayhem episode, like we use mayhem. To. Mayhem <laughs> is that a pig who is a superhero? That's and the word villain? mayhem. It's mayhem. You're saying mayhem, funny? It is mayhem. Mayhem. There's no e. 
It's mayhem. Uh, ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, go ahead and look at Yazid's face as I type out this word. I've been spelling mayhem wrong for 27 <laughs> years. <laughs> How has nobody told me that I've been spelling that name wrong for this long? God damn. It's not even like I don't use that word. I use that word somewhat regularly. I just like you to look me in the eye and said, motherfucker, it's mayhem. I always thought it was mayhem. I've pronounced it as mayhem for 27 years, dude. I've written mayhem in a college essay. <laughs> and no one corrected it. A mayhem is what you get when Easter falls on, falls on a Sunday in May. You get that mayhem for the family. Can Easter fall in May? I believe it. It's a, it's a. I have no idea. I, the day is different every year based off of something, and I forget what it is. But it's um, 40 days from Ash Wednesday, and Ash Wednesday is something. I don't know. I'm a bad Catholic. Anyway, it could be in May, I think. So the Lord smoked a bowl. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, what were we talking? Oh, yeah. On episode 100, we can definitely just freestyle it. We basically freestyle it still, but uh, even less preparation. I like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, frustrating part of working on home games. I definitely agree. Just the fact that uh, progress is slow because, you know, this is bills job. to pay. Yeah, shit. Sucks. But anyway, my other question, pretty pretty general question, but what's something you learned? Something that you've, uh, some way you've grown? Mm, something I've learned. I learned a lot about vision, more than I ever thought I would need to or want to learn about vision. In this, like in, in a three D game or whatever, like what the all the uh, just in general, I learned how important angles were to mm -hmm. vision and how like video visual trickery. Yeah, yeah, but like, like no, like the actual like, geometry of how you see, because mm. that's basically how video games work, and then also like the limitations therein, and then also like how three dimensional right. works and how that works for humans too, because like. I mean, if I'm going to read about video games, might as well know how people work. So I was like a lot and it was quite interesting of mm -hmm. like how people have like these, like a, a discrete number of things that see things and we put it all together and we're like, that's contiguous. But reality is like, not really, mm -hmm. but it kind of is. Um, anyway, uh, that's one thing I learned. Another thing I learned was a lot about like, I guess like how to goal set for myself this is like high level but like goal set for myself yeah i'm not a very good person at setting my own goals mm -hmm. i like when somebody else sets them for me and i'm just supposed to meet expectations <laughs> i'm quite good at that meeting expectations i don't really like excel at <laughs> <laughs> exceed expectations regularly but uh yeah so it's like uh, learning to like set goals for like square like where did i draw the line on square where am i going to draw the line color tag where am i going to draw the line on the next game like when do i just say like this is good enough and also like wh how to like project manage myself too because it's like what do i need to have like a viable version of this game and stuff like that and when do i say i've spent enough time on this i need to do something else yeah 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 exactly yeah like all like 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 basically like setting like a floor and a ceiling for for the outputs and also like setting expectations for myself like i said i don't normally do that and i just kind of go through life yeah yeah i have that too like um i like it when i don't have to think about what i'm doing yeah <laughs> it's kind of yeah i like it when task. somebody is like make this button blue and and circly and i'm like give me a mock <laughs> I'll make it exactly like that mock and they're like here you go and I'm like all right thank you yeah yeah I've I've had that too where um my difficulty when doing that is a job is that I like the work and so I get a frustrating feeling when I'm doing something that I should like but I'm doing bullshit yeah so I when I'm working I can separate it as like viewing it as a task or whatever, even though it's writing code. Mm -hmm. It's not code I want to write. It's like yeah. a job. Yeah. But this is different. Um, and it, it is like better and worse in a lot of ways. But it's for me, it's like a good free thing because I can actually just say, 
I'm going to do this and no one can tell me no. <laughs> <laughs> I like I, uh, the, the kind of passion, the, the energy that I have for things that I do care about. I keep it for this instead of trying to like put it into things that it, it wouldn't be appreciated in mm-hmm. because that's when I burn myself out and I like get passionate about shit that no one cares about. But if I get passionate about this, I see a payoff because I'm like, the, like, it affects me directly. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Uh, that's good. I like that. Yeah. I uh, I like coding. I don't like everything around coding. So this is fun because it's like I get to do. It's the- yeah, I get to like secretly do it. Like it's just like a <laughs> private thing. Like I'm not. I'm not getting paid or. It's not. It's not so that it's gonna go on like my review or whatever. I'm just doing it. Yeah. The day we start having yearly reviews is the day my productivity really goes downhill and I start watching YouTube videos while we're recording podcasts. I think the only time <laughs> you're just reviewing like whatever league game you're watching. Uh, if we're ever in a position where we have to do annual reviews, I will be leaving. Because <laughs> fuck that. We can't both leave if we have to do annual reviews. Fuck it. Who <laughs> reviews? I'll do your annual review. You do mine. We just sit in a room for about an hour, record a podcast, and go home. And everyone's like, damn, that must have been a really tough review. It's anonymous feedback, though, <clears throat> so it'll be okay. <laughs> I won't know who gave me my feedback. Here's what we actually do is we do annual review. When we have, like, a big user base that's, like, po- like listens to the podcast and, like, phones in and stuff. Not sure. phones in, but whatever. We have them do our annual reviews for us. Ooh, that'd be fun. That'd be good. Yeah. It's like what was uh what are three areas of improvement for you, Zed? Oh, I have a list, buddy. I'll give you that at a later date. Yeah. I'll I be just, the anonymous listener. Hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I um He's always got his knees out when he records. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um I was gonna say Your thigh is in my periphery right now. It is. These are very short shorts. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Go ahead. I actually had to get special underwear that was shorter than these shorts because my normal underwear is longer than them. That's a crazy look. Have your chonies sticking out of the bottom? Yeah. No, it'd be like significant because these go up to like mid thigh. I got these specifically. This is this is just like you're like really into like hip hop and stuff. This is my example of what I'm really into. Roger Federer partnered with a brand called Uniqlo. Mm-hmm. I know you. Yeah, I know Uniqlo. Yeah, these are the Uniqlo shorts. Roger Federer's Uniqlo shorts. Mm. I own two of them, and mm. I almost bought his full kit when he came back from to Doha, which was a tournament. Damn. But I don't like the color because I don't like green as a color on me. Yeah, it makes me look like a me, tree. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, there's a couple colors that I can't wear. Somebody convinced me that yellow was a good color on me, and then I saw another guy who looked similar to me in color in a yellow T-shirt like a pastel yellow t-shirt. And I was like, yellow's not a good color for me. Yeah. You can see too much. Yeah. You have to make that decision for yourself though. You know, it's like I was wearing a green t-shirt in high school and this girl I didn't know was walking with her friend this way. And she was like, yo, look over there. That's Shrek. Oh no. And then later on I was like, actually green is my color. It matches my eyes and she's a dumbass. Yeah, hell yeah, brother. Yeah. I uh, I don't know. I I'm very picky about what colors I can. I I feel like I can wear. That's why I normally just wear like black, gray, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and like a very specific kind of blue. Yeah, yeah. The man look, just basic man. Yeah, just like <laughs> generic, colors. generic dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you watched a sport. I do watch sports. That's true. I like, um, I actually really do like wearing uh, some of my soccer jerseys. I also like my League of Legends jerseys, but I don't like about the League of Legends jerseys is a one time at a fast food place when we were still allowed to do that at work. Or we were not allowed, but we went to the office still. Like when everyone was in the office still, we would go to lunch together. Yeah, in the before times. We went to this place and this dude, he was like, when I was ordering my food, he was stopped ordering, like accepting my order. He was like, do you stream on Twitch? And I was like, no and he was like oh your shirt says twitch on it and i was like oh it does yeah you're right uh because I, I don't know but i like i like i like wearing them it makes me feel like i'm finally showing people that i have interests and hobbies because otherwise my f- facade is very smooth like you can't really tell what i'm into and i look like this it's true it's true unless you see my shorts and you're like that guy like does something that, showing his thighs yeah i guess like runs or bikes or something like uh, does some like physical activity yeah but 
That's why it's easier to just wear brands that you like look like a NASCAR when you walk out. <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> What's the C in the G? Dolce and Gabbana or whatever? Yeah, Dolce and Gabbana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know brands. You know brands. <laughs> I'm impressed with your fashion sense, you know? My mom actually knows a lot about brands, and so I've just picked up on some of it. Yeah. But I do love when we're in public when with my mom. Like, mm. we were in uh, Singapore. We're in, like, a really fancy mall, basically. Mm. Like, a huge, like, really fancy mall. And I really liked pointing to any store mm. and be like, oh, it's Versace. <laughs> and my mom was like, you see Because people would turn and be like, what? Yeah. Cause you're like, oh, I love Versace, yeah, yeah. and I look like similar to this. Like I'm in like shorts or whatever, cause I'm on vacation. I don't care. Right. They're like, what the hell? This guy's like, talking about. they're like, wow, look a poor. Yeah. <laughs> like it's Cartier, but I'll yeah. be like, oh, it's Carter. You, you guys love Carter? <laughs> I love Carter. Yeah. You can watch. There's a there's a, a luxury consignment website called The Real Real. Mm-hmm. And they really go all out getting their pronunciation on that. It's like, get the latest from Hermes Cartier. Like, they just, like, really fucking go for it. Uh, Herms. Herms. <laughs> yeah, Hermes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a fun thing. I only know about that stuff, really, because I listen to ASAP Rocky. He likes to, I don't wear clothes, I wear pieces type guy. So. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't wear, he doesn't wear, just, he doesn't have a wardrobe, he has a fit, or a set of fits or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, got a fit. I never understood that. It's an outfit. It's a fit. No, I know that. I never understood like buying like a set outfit. I buy, buy like modularly. Did you ever like have a first day of school? You had to come back fresh as shit and then go back to the Reeboks day two with that first day. <laughs> come through with the Jenko. No, dude. I'd wear my favorite outfit on the first day and I'd wear it again later. So you have an outfit. It's not just random shit. Well, I yeah, but like all of those pieces would go into other outfits too. So now they're pieces. Damn, you're already moving up. <sighs> Classy ass guy. No, like that T-shirt can go with like every pair of jeans I own. It's like the specific combo of jeans and T-shirt and underwear and socks and shoes is the most comfortable thing for me. So that's what I wear on the first day. That's what I used to do, even in college, I think. Yeah, well, I think if you're going for like an outfit that fully matches. It's a little intense. Like if you get like a Burberry suit with like the plaid shit all over, it's just like yeah. you're doing too much. But if you're uh you know mixing it with something, it might be cool. It's like a whole thing. I don't know. I don't know anything about fashion or style. It's like all from hip hop. I know that stuff. Well, think my brother on this thing. Yeah. See, yes, it's about fashion and style. Just keep talking about Yeezys and how many I have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hilariously, I think he's into Jordans now. <laughs> the Jordan One is like the sneaker. I mean, I feel like everybody who's into shoes has a Jordan One collection. It's like the, the, the white t shirt of a wardrobe. It's like you. I, I will never wear a white t shirt. Well, you get the point, though. <laughs> I understand what you're getting at. I just want you to know. Well, some people will never wear Jordans and will never experience the never, joy of it. I probably will not wear Jordans. Yeah. I feel like I'm not the right person for Jordans. I'm gonna bring back Fat Farms. I don't know what those are. They're the sh- they're the sneakers with the P, like remember Baby Fat. Yep. Like there's like a Fat P H, Fat Farm. My friend Gabe and I we used to we got we got Fat Farms in second grade. They were like the coolest shit. And I don't even know how we knew about them, but they were just like the shoe. And then I was the first one in the group to get some Fat Farms. Mm-hmm. And I was how you say dripping that week. You know, all my my friends were just like, "Oh goddamn!" With the with the with the with the real fat farms. Ooh, we're not doing a song of the week this week, everybody. Uh, but I do kind of have a song of the week. It's like a special edition song of the week. Um, it's more like a music video of the week. Yeah. Look up "International Players Anthem" by Outkast. It's, a, it's just the wedding theme, I guess, for the week. Whole the whole video is Andre three thousand right half of Outcast, he like the character is getting married. You know, it's a it's a it opens. He's uh, talking about sending a text to a girl he used to see, saying that he chose this cutie pie with whom he wants to be with. And I apologize if this message gets you down. Then mm. I cc'd every girl that I'd cc round town. You know? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. It's a great song. It's like a classic song. I played it in the car on the way back. It's the one I think you were bobbing your head, and Tynan was singing his 
soul out uh, to the <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's a great song. Okay, and uh, just because I'm getting married, so I figured that was the that was on brand for this week. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, dump in the gut, raw from the giddy up. That's going to do it for us this week. Thanks, everybody, for listening uh, and watching. As always, our music is done by Nitan uh, on Bandcamp. It is Nitan, N-Y-T-A-N. Uh, he's also our friend Tynan. I always say that, too. Uh, our website's homegames.io. Our Twitter is at homegames.io. And our email address is podcast at homegames.io. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.